Okay, it's uh, six thirty. We uh, we have a quorum, I see. So we will call the meeting to order. This is the uh, committee of the whole public works, environmental services, and facilities meeting of Monday, October seventeenth, twenty twenty, and it is six thirty p.m. Could I have a uh, someone to approve the agenda, please? Um, Mr. Mr. Packwood and uh, Mr. Dillabaugh seconding. Thank you. Going to uh, any uh, any errors or omissions or additions uh, to the agenda? Or, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Certainly. Uh, I'm not asking for a change here at this point, but uh, I do have some concerns with item M and will reserve the right to defer uh, that issue when we get to it, depending on how the discussion goes. But uh, let, let's proceed with the discussion at least. Okay, anything else that I see? Nothing else. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Yes. Terry, thank you. Now, this brings us to number three. Do we have any disclosures of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? Terry, yeah. none. Thank you. And that brings us to business arising from the previous uh, committee of the whole, uh, which was on uh, September 18th. Are there any errors or omissions? So no errors or omissions, but uh, business arising, just a couple of things, if I may. Go ahead. So on page two of 78, uh, which is really the second page of those minutes, at the top of the page there, I had requested that we get an update on the the, the two drainage projects and that we get uh, a list of the change orders. Now, uh, they're not in this package. And so uh, through the chair to the staff, can we expect to see the change orders at the either the council meeting or the admin finance? Well, the council meeting is going to be November the 3rd, I think now, is it not? Second? Is that the second? So uh, when will we get the, the change orders for the project? So through the uh, through, through, through the chair, uh, we, we anticipate to have those uh, available uh, for uh, November 2nd. Okay, for further question, go ahead. So on the same page, I uh, just was wondering, uh, we had the presentation from John Eric Dillon of Street Scan, and I was just wondering if the staff had had any follow-up from uh, Mr. Dillon, I think he was uh, going to get back to us to try to get a little bit better idea of the extent of our road network and try to put some pricing together. I'm just wondering if that happened. Through the, through, through the chair, I do not believe that there's been any follow-up with Mr. Dillon at this, at this point. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, anyone else, uh, questions, concerns, minutes? Okay, I have a do I have a mover and a second here? Uh, they've already been approved. They have. That's good. That, that is correct. You have a call. Do we put the vote? Do we do we call for a vote on this? On the minutes? No, sorry. they've already been approved. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so tonight we have no uh, delegations or presentations tonight. And uh, discussion items number six, we have none at the moment. So that leads us into the action and information items in number seven. And the first one is uh, 7A, which is the third quarter uh, fire report. And that's in your packages on page uh, eight to 11. And Chief Moore, would you highlight your report, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. We finished uh, the third quarter with 54 calls. You can see the fire losses there, just uh, around $207,000 in fire losses. We did receive two resignations. One was for a relocation out of province, and the second one was due to uh, family commitments. Under training courses, we finally hosted our uh, liquid propane firefighting uh, training in Cardinal. That consisted of several uh, online hours of study, followed by a full day review a full day of live fire scenarios. Under activity, all of the apparatus have received their annual service and safeties, and we uh, have 
completed a recruiting information session, testing and interviews for seven candidates. Third permits, 82 permits in the third quarter with $850 in revenue. And I provided you with the burn map that shows where the birds were registered along with the updated uh, fire department roster as of September 30th. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief Moore. Uh, do we have any questions for Chief Moore? I'll start at the end with Councillor Billabong. Uh, none by me, thank you. Mr. Mayor. So the, there's 82 new permits, and permits are only valid until the end of the year. Is that correct, Mr. Chairman? I'm just curious that people are still buying them this late in the year. To the chair, that is correct. <clears throat> and I, I know the revenue there is 11,000 year to date, so it's not an insignificant revenue i think it's rather significant and uh so uh, my question is how are we earmarking that just to go into the general revenue fund or are we earmarking it for any particular um usage because i don't recall that we had any discussion of that during the budget cycle so just wondering how the staff is treating it so through 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 the chair at, at this particular stage, it's just the uh, revenue that would be um, offsetting the operating expenses. Okay, so just general revenue. Just general revenue. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Hunter. Right here. And uh, Mr. Packwood. Nothing here, sir. And Mr. Bush. Okay, thank you. Uh, this was an information item only. There's no recommendations, so I'm going to move on to our to our next item, which is the. 2022 MTO interim uh, reports and they're in your packages on pages 12 to 13. And uh, Chief Moore, uh, could you uh, could you give us a lowdown? Of course, this is very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Certainly, thank you, Mr. Chair. So on uh, on the second page of that report, gives you the uh, gives you the table. Uh, so far until June 30th. We had uh, $18,865 uh, in uh, service calls rejected and $10,202.76 approved. Uh, Chief Moore, if I, if I could, if you don't mind me asking a question, I normally don't do this as chair, but so the total then would be the 18 thousand and the ten thousand added together and that would be the complete total of the of the uh of the calls submitted that is correct Mr. okay i just want to get that clear okay uh i'll start with uh, mr bush uh, this time do you have any questions for chief uh, same issue every time just a lot of uh a lot of driving for our drivers and our trucks and not much getting feedback but yeah, it seems right. like there's many we can do with that. So you're absolutely you're absolutely correct. I agree. Mr. Sure. Packwood. No comment at this time. Councillor Hunter. No. And Deputy Mayor Dacia. No. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So I'm not gonna let the opportunity go by uh, without a few questions and observations. So the first observation, of course, is echo Mr. Bush's sentiments, a lot of driving and a lot of responses. 17 responses without any uh, recompense or recognition financial recognition and of a total of what 17 and five that's uh, what 22 uh out of the total of 22 responses uh ten ten thousand dollars in in financial recognition so uh so through the chair to the chief uh we've talked about this before and by the way thank you very much for this report i appreciate having it and having it uh, up to date and at hand because we never know when we're going to get the opportunity to speak to a cabinet minister and bring this to their attention and I just love bringing it to their attention every chance I get but going back to your association and your uh, network of um, of chiefs um, has there is this is this issue gaining any traction within your I'm going to say within your industry through the chair, this this is one of the priorities for the uh, association, Ontario Association of Fire Chiefs. Um, I think it might have uh, maybe taken a backseat to some of the recent announcements with uh, training and such, but it, it is still one of their uh, one of their priorities. 
Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And please keep these reports coming. Thank you. Councilor uh, No, I echo the same. I mean, we've been fighting this, and it's a shame that we, um, we're not getting more uh, more compensation for this. Hopefully, in the new year, uh, it'll change. Okay. Okay, if there's no other questions, then again, there's no recommendation with this. It's an information item. So I'm going to move on then to the next uh, the next item, which is our third quarter operations report. And uh, Mr. Shaw, would you highlight your report, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So for a public works, the loose and hard top maintenance uh, programs ongoing. Uh, we've had in fact of Cedar Grove Road approximately 1.1 lane kilometers were completed. Um, capital projects, the county road two engineering final design cost estimates for to receive from the township, and they're just looking to it's finalizing uh, to get ready to uh, pr provide the tender. <clears throat> Spencerville drainage um, project, I believe the painting painting is completed. Uh, Johnstown drainage, um, Sophia drainage and uh, pipe are expected to be completed by the end of this week, and looking to start Mary Street. Uh, either Friday or Monday. Um, miscellaneous um, 85 service requests and 67 work orders completed in the quarter. Uh, our top road line painting completed. Um, four entranceway culverts were installed, one custom along Windmill Road, and uh, six 911 signs were installed. For the waste disposal site, a total of 516 vehicles attended over 13 Saturdays in the quarter. For a total of $2,366.50. Uh, there's two open burns, and uh, the brush and leaf pickup is set for November 8th in Cardinal and 9th in Spencerville, Johnstown, New Wexford. Third quarter water treatment flow summaries uh, flows around 450 to 470 uh, meters cubed per day, which is typical this time of year. Third quarter operation parameters for uh, symptoms, um, all within compliance. Microbial testing also, all within compliance, no color forms, no E. coli. Third quarter report for the industrial park, uh, again, all in compliance with uh, zero zero for color forms and coli. 2022 third quarter report for lagoons. The sludge survey has been complete and we're waiting for the report. The wastewater treatment plant, all the parameters again within compliance. And for removals, all in the 9% range for removals. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Shaw. I'll uh, I'll start with Councillor Dillipo again. Do you have any questions for Mr. Shaw? Uh, yes, you, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Dealey Chair. Uh, Dealey Chair to Mr. Shaw. Mary Street starting. You're saying uh, next Friday or or Monday. Well, both John's or both Safari and Mary be completed completely uh, this year, 2022. Through the chair, the uh, I, last meeting I had with the um, contractor, GGG, and actually the principal was in on that one. Um, the all indicators are there. I'm confident that it will be done at this point. Thank you. And duly chair, one more on uh, Mary Street. I uh, had several uh, phone calls and, and emails uh, about our, when it's when that street's closed on Sapphire. We, we, uh, we picked up some. Uh, uh, recycling and, and, and garbage and it was a little bit of an issue on a, on a few. Uh, can we maybe take a couple more steps closer on Mary Street to make sure people are aware and that we get uh, garbage and, and, and recycling together where we can maybe bring it up when the streets close, bring it up where we can get out. Uh, through the chair, Councilor Dillabaugh, I'm um, just uh, writing up a letter now that is a better uh, overview of what's going on there and it also includes uh, garbage come out on a regular day right. um, and the contractor if the uh, garbage truck can't get through is to collect the garbage and put it in the spot and then return the bins i've also requested that uh, residents mark their bins recycling bins with their civic number so that they can speak to them thank you so much okay thank you mr mayor 
Um, I, I'm going to go actually to the waste disposal section um, because of questions that I had over the weekend. Uh, and, and the the note is one refusal for construction material. Uh, uh, and I don't know, I may or may not have in, spoken to this individual, but my understanding is that it's commercial construction, commercial or industrial construction material that we do not accept at the transfer site, but that residential construction material we will take in. But do I have that right, or have I, have I forgotten the, what we what exactly our parameters are there? To the chair, if I may. Through the chair, um, no, it's uh, all construction material. All construction material. So somebody that's doing residential construction, remodeling a room in a house or something, they have to take their their construction material to Brockley. We don't take it at all. Through the chair, that's correct. I, I was under the impression that it was just commercial and industrial that we didn't take. All right, now then the next question becomes uh, a question of the permits. Now we know that you can buy the punch cards at a number of different locations and we've got the list here, the office, the Cardinal Library, uh, the hardware store in uh, Cardinal. Uh, you can also purchase them online. I'm curious as to why somebody would be told, it, it being a Saturday, no, nope, you, ha you have to go to Spencerville and get a card. Why would they be told that at the gate? To the chair, if I may. And it can be just as easily have been sent to Cardinal Library. I think it's open on Saturday morning. But if it isn't, for sure, Virtuals is. Um, so why would they be told you have to go to Spencerville when they know the Spencerville office is closed. <clears throat> was this a staff member at the transfer station, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, That's the way it was. Uh, I don't say it was or it wasn't. That's the way it was reported to me. To the chair, I, I this is the first I've heard of it, so I, I can't really reply to that. I can look and see what is going on. I suspect it was just a um, kind of a knee jerk kind of answer. To uh, that fact, they didn't have the punch card, and that's the only way we can take uh, garbage at the dump is with punch cards. There's no cash uh, exchange at the, at the transfer site itself. Yeah, we know that. So I think through the through, through the chair, just just follow up a little bit more on that. That all all, all the attendants at the uh, at the transfer station are well aware that it's either the the, the library or virtuals on on Saturday is the only location. So um, I. I, I would be extremely surprised that the response was that you just have to go back and spend your bill. Um, so, um, in, 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 unless they uh, on, on a Friday um, uh, purchased a, a card uh, through the PayPal system, which there would be no way that we would be able to get that mail in to, in, in, in to that location uh, to to them for, for for that Saturday, but um, uh, usually. The, uh, the, the attendants are very good at indicating that you know you can you, you can go to virtuals and, and get that card in return. So. Now, is there any chance that uh, I mean I, this this person was quite upset? I took quite a blast. Uh, is there any chance that that virtuals or the library would have run out of cards on that particular day? Um, would uh, through, through the chair would it have been in the last? Uh, couple One. of weeks. Yeah, within the last three or four weeks. Uh, there, 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 there may have been that that uh, chance. I know that uh, Virgil's was back uh, not too long ago to to, to get another uh, allotment of those cards. So I, I suppose that, that 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 may be very possible. Okay, I just have to get back to this individual, and I want to know what I'm going to say. Uh, but for sure, I'm going to have to say that even if it's residential construction material, we do not accept it at our transfer site. So that's fine. I, that's something I think we should probably revisit, Mr. Chair, but that's an issue for another day. Thank you very much. You, any other questions, Mr. Mayor? No, that's it. I'm going to move over to uh, Deputy Mayor Dejan and Councillor Hunter, Mr. Packwood, and Mr. Bush. 
Nothing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Shaw, for your report. Uh, we'll move on. There's also that's an information item, and we will move on to uh, our next information item, which is the third quarter water and sewer system budget variance report. Now, our treasurer is not here, so uh, Mr. CAO, will you speak into this? Uh, to, to, to the chair, I certainly can. Uh, Go ahead, please. Thank you. So just a, just a high level uh, overview with respect to the uh, revenue side for the Central <laughs> Wastewater System. It's uh, it, it's a uh, it's billed uh, quarterly, so the that rate uh, doesn't uh, does not fluctuate unless there are additional uh, users added on to the system. With respect to the revenues in the industrial park sewer and industrial and entrance Square water distribution systems, they are billed uh, monthly and uh, uh, through the township office. So both systems uh, year to date revenues are close to or over the 2020 uh, budget estimate. And with respect to the cardinal water and wastewater revenues, uh, they, they are as of August 15th. So we are experiencing probably about a 90 to 120 day uh, lag time from the time when uh, we don't see Lawrence is billing before we're actually receiving uh, the, uh, uh, the revenue. And uh, staff are working with uh, Lawrence to bring that uh, timetable back down into that. Uh, uh, 30 to 45 day period. So, um, with respect to expenses, uh, the Central Wastewater System uh, currently at 40% uh, at, at of the 2022 uh, budget remaining. Uh, the Edersburg uh, Water Distribution uh, System currently is close to 40% of the budget remaining. Um, you will note that the Industrial Park Wastewater System. Has, uh, has an increase in the flow rate. Uh, and uh, that was a result of uh, a couple of uh, instances where one of the industrial users had uh, uh, left uh, water on that uh, made its way to the uh, sewage system. And uh, with our latest report uh, from uh, the, the town of Prescott uh, on the monthly flows that they have sort of returned back to their normal uh, uh, normal allotments in, in, in that month. So we certainly will see uh, an increase uh, in our uh, percent uh, share cost for 2022. And uh, certainly, uh, but uh, we will have that uh, increased revenue to sort of offset the cost. Just Thank you. Maybe take a pause. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe if the chair would indulge that we could take uh, we could take time. Yeah, I think we'll just take time for a moment here. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take as much time as required. Sure. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, 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 oh. One more time. We are, uh, we are, I believe, uh, Mr. Grant, you were in the process of, uh, of just almost finishing up your, uh, your, your report. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Peter. If you would continue. I thought I, I, I thought I had finished and everybody was just uh, ecstatic about the report and we had moved on. Well, well, <laughs> and, and I thought the same way. Uh, however, I do think there was about a two or three minute uh, delay there. No, we're there. Uh, I believe that I, I was sort of at the uh, expenses on the uh, cardinal wastewater uh, side. So we're uh, currently have about 36% uh, of the 2022 budget remaining. And uh, the uh, cardinal water system currently has uh, just about 26% of the uh, uh, 2022 budget remaining. And typically you would have uh, at this time of year, I think 25% remaining to be sort of on target. So. I will but, certainly open it up if, uh, if there are any questions on uh, particular items uh, of, of the budget. Yes, thank, thank you, thank you for that report. So I will, uh, I will start with Councillor Bilba. If you no, nope, that's what I mean. Thank you very much, much. Mr. Mayor. Okay, so um, I'm just wondering, uh, through the chair, I'm wondering aloud. Uh, 
<coughs> that is to say, out loud. Um, if the staff has had an opportunity to analyze these, and I, I see we have sort of projections to year end, but is the staff thinking in terms of recommending uh, some minor increases in rates uh, that would uh, would be dealt with in either December or January to take effect January the 1st? Uh, that's that's my main uh, issue at this point in time. And I know that we've still got actually uh, four months, three months to go, October, November, December, three months to go. Uh, but we do get a pretty good look at things right now. And uh, we do know that these systems do need reserves in their uh, increases in their reserves. So I'm just wondering if staff has had an opportunity to put their mind to what the potential or possible uh, rate increases might be on these systems. Uh, so through the uh, th through the chair, uh, we, we certainly have had uh, some preliminary uh, conversations <laughs> and we are um, look, looking right now that we that uh, the thought process is that likely uh, each of the systems will uh, will see or, or, or need to be uh, looked at with uh, some type of uh, small rate adjustment. But uh, uh, for instance, if the uh, in the cardinal water, cardinal wastewater, we've got the uh, the, the Kelly Road Two uh, project that is a, it's a pretty substantial uh, project, uh, and um, so. Uh, and uh, there, there is the uh, the, the valve replacement in, in the Spencer Valve, the capital project for that valve replacement. And there is the um, uh, splitter box liner that we we shifted the, uh, the the funds for that splitter box liner towards the valve because it was a higher priority. So we're we're anticipating some of that that capital, and we think that it would be. The, uh, wise to to at least look at a, a, a small increase in the number of those systems. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Deputy Mayor, nothing for me. And Councillor Hunter, I'm here. And Mr. Packwood, I'm here. And Mr. Bush, I'm here. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Grant, for that uh, for that report. Once again, that was an information item only, and we will move on now to the. Uh, uh, parks uh, and recreation and the 2022 third quarter facility staff report. So, Mr. Spencer, will you highlight uh, your first report, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this is the third quarter of the staff's report, which is for the July to September period. Um, just indicating that the minor ball finished up in uh, late July. Um, Summer ice rentals at the arenas started on August the 8th. Just also indicating that the Leaf and Humble Health Unit continue to run their, their monthly COVID booster clinics. And um, our, they had one last week, and I believe they had just a little over 100 people that came through the door, which for them was, uh, was good numbers. Um, they're always uh, happy to come to Cardinal. And, uh, Pretty much local people that are going to the shop, so we should be for them not have the problem. Um, just also indicating that the, um, the Ontario Early Years Program started up again in September. This is something that had been shut down during the COVID times. Um, so they're back up and running, and uh, if not last Thursday, but the Thursday before, they had uh, I think it was nine kids, uh, kids, nine children that uh, attended in the morning. But, Parents, grandparents, what have you. So the numbers are quite promising for that. Um, and that again is geared to uh, preschool kids. Um, the actual stats themselves for the facilities for July and August, you'll see the numbers are, are high for hours of bookings for the South Center and the Port of Johnstown B room. That's because that's where our day camp was being uh, run out of. So the calendar indicates that. The booking is from eight o'clock to five o'clock daily, Monday to Friday. And so that's why those numbers are are significantly higher than what they typically would be on in any given month. Um, and then the last page just shows the ice rentals. Um, again, it's not a full month for August and uh, September as well. The uh, Spencer Arena didn't start until the twenty first of September. So that one hundred and fifty hours just represents the twenty first till the end of September. 
Thank you for any questions if there are any. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your, your report. And I will start with uh, Mr. Bush if you have anything. Um, coming up, how do the rentals look for the uh, for the arenas? Through the chair to uh, Mr. Bush. Um, the Three Down Arena has one ice slot that is open on Friday nights, an hour and a half slot. Uh, but all the other prime time ice rentals are, are secure for the season. Uh, there are openings during the day, but from 4 30 or 4 o'clock till 10 30, 11 o'clock nights, uh, they're all booked. Uh, Spencerville has a, a few uh, extra spots over and above that. Uh, primarily on on weekends, uh, on Sunday, sorry, on Saturday and Sunday evenings, from nine o'clock on. Uh, there is the odd rental on Saturday nights here now from nine to ten. A local group of uh, gentlemen are starting to use that, so it's coming along. It's not at one hundred percent though. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hacker. The question has already been answered for now. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Hacker. No, I think we're doing pretty good with the rentals. For, for it, we just uh, unfortunately they're being in the rural area, we don't have much bookings for off time, prime time. So during the day, we have a lot of ice that we're in camp for and for the auto and they have those hours booked because there's more people that can access them. So. Okay. And Deputy Mayor Dishon. No, I'm good. Mr. Mayor. So uh, I, I, behind the numbers is the is the programming, and I'm just interested in the hockey programming and the figure skating programming. <laughs> um, are those two programs, minor hockey and figure skating, are they getting back to their pre-COVID numbers in terms of kids and participants and uh, demand for ice time? Uh, through the chair to uh, the mayor, um, this the skate program. So the Spencerville Skate uh, Skating Club, they have folded this year. They made a last minute decision that they uh, didn't have enough regist registration. So uh, kids that would typically would run their program have kind of um, signed up now with Prescott Skate Club. Prescott Skate Club had rental or had ice rented in, in Cardinal Hat for the last two years. Now they picked up the slots that Spencerville Skate Club had here. So the Prescott Skate Club numbers are good and it helps that kids from our municipality have signed up. So those slots are being utilized not by the Spencerville Skate Club, not by the Prescott Skate Club. As far as hockey itself across the board, HEO, registration is up about 25% over last year. Registration is up. Yes, that's across the board, across the whole branch. Um, so numbers are slowly starting to come back. It's not the competitive level that you have to worry about. It's the grassroots hockey is, is, is where the numbers need to get picked up at. And those numbers are starting to, to uh, pick up a little bit. I know the Ron Baker program that, that was utilized at the arena here, those numbers are, are solid this year for South Central minor hockey. So it's, it's getting the the House League and the B rep hockey, the the double A, the cyclones, and, and the triple A hockey. That's not a problem. We all always have those two. It's the lower level hockey that is what the local associations are trying to gear up, trying to utilize to get those people back in the community. Okay. okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. And Councillor Gilman. Uh yeah, just to, to go on that, Gary Chair, to, to Mike, uh, how did they think we're gonna get the lower level off? There'd be teams that would like is it would it be maybe cost if it could reduce the cost? Do that generate through the chair of you No. I think over the last two years numbers for minor hockey were down because there was so much uncertainty mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. whether or not a program was going to run or not run. Mm -hmm. So I think this year will be a good stepping stone. I think you'll potentially see more people return back next year if this hockey season can be run. Uninterrupted, and that's what the plan is hopefully for the association to be able to offer that those programs. Yeah, yes, no, that's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. The question was answered. Okay, yes, it was. Thank you. I, yeah. have, uh, I, I have no questions myself. So, uh, with that, thank you, uh, Mr. Fetzer. And we'll move on then to uh, uh, 
to another uh, of your reports, and that is going to be the third quarter facilities maintenance report. Yes. Uh, if you would, uh, yeah, I'll you. just read and again, these are uh, work orders and service requests over and above what our staff typically do on a day to day basis in our facilities and um, our buildings and what have you. I agree on just indicating that Pimatech doors uh, has come in again and have completed their yearly inspections on our overhead doors uh, at both arenas. Um, Town Hall electrical safety inspection was completed. Uh, also, the uh, fall inspection for the, the generator was completed. Um, and then just on the second page is just a list of service requests that have been completed. As you can see, annual fire extinguisher inspections were completed on all of our facilities. Um, I've listed just the ones that I deal with, but they did the township wide, the fire department, fire no service, uh, and the public works strategies as well. That was completed uh, two weeks ago. So I have answering questions if there are any. I'll, I'll open the floor up. I'll start with Mr. Bush. No, I'm good. Uh, Mr. Crackley? Oh, I'm good. And Councillor Hunter? Uh, just a question to the chair of the facility manager. We uh, went out our tables and chairs to the IPM. Uh, did they come back in good shape? To the chair, to uh, Councillor Hunter, yes. Um, we delivered them there the week before, and we arrived back on the Monday after the event was over. And all our chairs and tables were all accounted for, and all were in excellent shape. And they've been all returned to the various facilities that we have stored at. Deputy Mayor, do you have anything? No, I don't know. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Well, I just wanted to recognize the um, the input and the support for the international plowing match. I know that we were involved with, I think the Zamboni went as well. I just wanted to recognize that. It's extra work for the staff. I know that. Uh, so I want to recognize that, but I'm, I'm going to get to a, another issue if I can on page 30 of 78. And on page 30 of 78, you indicate to the chair, uh, you indicate a number of annual fire extinguisher inspections. Now, in the old days, uh, those inspections were done by a third party that signed a card or initial the card. Uh, that was attached to the fire extinguisher. Do we still do that? Is that still happening in that manner? To the chair, to the mayor, yes. All these inspections are done by Brockville Fire Protection Services. Oh, it's okay. not by our staff. Okay, third party and, and, and a tag of endorsement. That is correct. They tag, and they also put the year tag on it as well. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Councilor? Oh, absolutely not. Good report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just have one, uh, if you would just indulge me. Uh, uh, Mr. Spencer, and that is uh, on the breakdown of, uh, uh, for instance, Town Hall, which is at TH, Library, CL, and so on. And then I go down to the very first uh, uh, service report and it says CP. I, I, have I missed something? Cardinal Parks. Cardinal Parks? Well, it's a T, though. Oh, it's Cardinal Pool, I'm sorry. No, it's a, it's a T. It says CT, transport, transport Canteen Equipment to Spencerville Arena, CT. Oh, sorry. KTR uh, announced. Canteen. Page 30. Uh, transport Canteen Equipment from the uh, the Canteen Water uh, Facility. Okay, it just wasn't in the, uh, I guess it just isn't in No, the, you're right, it is not. My apologies. In, in the, uh, the memo. Okay, thank, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank no you, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Spencer. And again, that's your second report. I do believe, yes, you are up for one more than what I see here. And that is the uh, Spencerville Arena five-year structural review. And you've uh, supplied us with uh, with uh, briefing notes, et, et, et cetera. So if you would just like to uh, highlight something here. Certainly. To our uh, attention. Yes, something Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, again, as indicated, as part of our ongoing maintenance program, uh, based on the age of the facility, we, uh, every five years, have a structural engineer come in and do an in-depth report on the facility itself. Uh, field consultants have been the company we have dealt with now for the, for the last three reports, 2012, 2017, and then now again in, in uh, July of, of 2022. Um, very minor issues that uh, have come up, uh, things that we've already started to work on. And as indicated, the, the biggest thing 
Um, it's more timing than anything will be the scraping of, of the uh, of the beams in, in not all areas, just in some areas. But in order to do that, we have to remove the low-e ceiling that's in there. So that'll be a project that we will do in the spring. And it's something that we did in 2017 as well. This is just other areas that we will uh, focus on. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I'll start with Councillor Dillabach. Do you have any questions regarding the arena? Good for another five plus, right? Love to hear it. No, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> so, the question uh, that pertains to public safety on page 37 of 78, uh, at the uh, second last paragraph from the bottom, the second floor areas are accessed via a walkway from the main arena. And as in previous reports, we stress that the gathering of spectators along the walkway be prohibited and signage indicating this should be posted. So this report was received in July. I'm just wondering if the signage has been posted. Yes, it has. Okay, just uh, thank you very much. We our obligation to ask the question. And uh, that was my main thing. Uh, the mention of something about a um, repair brickwork as noted. So that's something that comes, I guess, with better weather. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Deputy Mayor Desha. Yeah, great, great report. Good to see that it's got a you know a five year uh, five year clean building report. It's good. And Councillor Hunter, no, all in good shape. It's been a lot of years. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Cockley. Mr. Spence, answer the question about the beans for me. Okay. And Mr. Bush. Good report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. From there, we'll, we'll move on. And I'm sorry, Mike, I almost let you off the hook, but unfortunately, I didn't. I realized my mistake, and you still have to report on the cardinal tool phase two. Uh, so we'll go to that now, and that starts on page 44 of your package. Thank you, Sabre. That's the last. Yes. <laughs> um, this is just an information item. Um, it's, you know, it's the topic is upgrades for phase two. Um, Back when we completed phase one, uh, I certainly indicated that phase two would, would have to take place in the coming uh, years. Um, the time to do that is we're hoping it is going to be in the spring of 2023. Um, the problem is a lot of the commercial school companies are, are wanting to book their times now for the spring in order to be able to secure their work orders and what have you. So um, I thought uh, in speaking with, with our CIO that it would be uh, best for us to uh, prepare a proposal uh, plan to put in for, for tender uh, documentation on November the 1st. Being able to bring that back uh, to uh, the council meeting on the 28th, which now I believe is on November the 2nd. Uh, and, uh, Report back and look for pre budget approval, pre budget approval, sorry, um, at that council meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spencer. Uh, I'll start with Mr. Bush. Do you have any questions regarding this report? Um, no, not really. No, not at this time. Mr. Becker? No questions at this time. Thank you. Councilor Hunter? No, here. Deputy Mardation? No, just one. What kind of dollar dollars are Anticipating the deputy mayor, you're looking at between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand dollars. <throat> mm -hmm. um, any other questions, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor? So, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So, uh, I can't remember back to our 2022 budget discussions when, when this first came up, but is that uh, estimate? That range is that roughly where we were when we were talking earlier about this project. Through the chair, I would say that the cost has been reduced by about fifty thousand um, dollars. And so I can't remember. Did we set up any kind of an anticipatory reserve to, to this project? I can't remember what we allocated no, dollars. We didn't. So this is going to be straight out. This is going to be financed straight out of 2023 tax revenues. Then, 
I don't think there's any other source of revenue, is there, that we can use? You see it over. I threw the chair to committee. Uh, that, that's one of the things that we're uh, looking at. But I, I would say that the, the, the bulk of it is most likely to, 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 to come from the tax station. Okay. And, and Mr. Chair, the reason I ask that is because uh, I'm wondering if this is the kind of a project that is uh, uh, amenable to a, a trillion grant application. I, I talked to my other mayor sitting at the table. And I know that they're fairly successful in getting what I'm going to call upgrades to uh, through the Trillion Foundation. So I would ask that staff take a close look at the possibility of submitting this as a as a project to the Trillion Foundation. We haven't been successful in the past in getting uh, much out of the Trillion Foundation, and I think this is an excellent candidate. So I'll drop that. But move to a second issue. Um, do we, the, the tender documents, the proposed plan is to issue the tender documents by November the 1st. So are the tender documents uh, just about ready then for issuance? And who's prepared the tender documents? To the chair, to the mayor, we have a consultant that we're working with, similar to what we did for phase one. Okay. And will we will we be ready to issue them on November the first? Well, I know the meeting isn't coming right then, but will we be ready on November the first? They will be issued on November the first. Okay, so they choose me. Okay, no. The plan is to issue them then. That is right. Okay, all right. And uh, then there's uh, obviously a closing date of November the fifteenth. And then the, the new council will have to deal with that after it comes into being on November the 15th. Right. Okay, that's, uh, I got the picture here and uh, I'm, I'm urging that we pass on a recommendation, Mr. Chair. And I see there is a recommendation here uh, that committee recommends that council direct staff to have the draft. Is this the right place? No, no I'm in the wrong place. No. My apologies. This is just information item. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And I will say if I can just go back to, uh, the mayor's comment about the trillion grant back in 2002 that school had the new binder completed with help from the trillion foundation so 2002 that, yeah it lasted 20 years lasted 20 years right. any other questions mr mayor no that's it councillor delora uh no i just hope that uh you're the chair to might take the, i would like to see the new bond to then have it ready for us Thank you. Okay, again, as, um, as Mr. Spencer pointed out, this was an information item. So we're going to move on now to uh, to our next uh, our next item, which is the Township Weather app. And uh, I know Mr. Shaw is just dying to uh, inform us as to what's going on here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Shaw, if you um, at the September 26th Council meeting, I'm going to make for just more information on the, uh, the weather app. The Ontario Good Roads Association weather app is used as a compliance tool uh, to meet the uh, requirements of their minimum maintenance standards. Uh, Townships use this for approximately five years. And attached to this report, there's a, uh, a picture of the report that comes out four times a day, every six hours. Um, these maps and uh, with the information involved, it is, helps with the road patrols to sort of predict uh, when when there might be some weather blowing in and when the road patrol might be done. Um, and then after you've read the reports, uh, the actual email itself has a red button on it. So the operator hits the red button and it goes to the cloud and is registered on their database, which is you can't change. So it's, it's a record that the uh, weather is being monitored by staff and uh, and let's and it's locked in and, and you can go back and, and look at that different dates for, for the information. So it's for compliance reasons, it's it's a, a good foolproof kind of way to, to prove that you're you're doing what you're supposed to do. So thank you. Uh thank you. And, and your briefing note is is quite extensive. So I'll open the floor to uh to questions. Uh if you don't mind, Mr. Shaw, I'll start with Councillor Gillespie. Done by me. Thank you. Nice uh, report, uh, Mr. Shaw. And uh, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So I understand uh, this is a basically a weather tracking and reporting uh, mechanism, but does it tie in in any way with our with the maintenance that we've actually done? Does it tie in in any way <coughs> with our road control? So, uh, that's that's the sort of the first question. So can we get an answer to that question? Then I then I have a second one. Are you comfortable with that? Certainly, uh, through the chair, the mayor. Um, it, it does tie in with the controls because it, it proves compliance that, that you're actually doing the observations of the weather. And if you have to go out and do a road patrol, it's picked up on our ADL system, which is, is the actual road uh, control system. So it provides a record that's not something that's uh, modifiable. It goes to the to the cloud with the Ontario Good Road Association, and it's a matter of record then. So it proves that we're we're doing the patrol or, or mm -hmm. monitoring. No, with all due respect, it doesn't prove that we're doing the patrol. Sorry, it, it it proves that we're monitoring the weather. Correct. Now here's the issue, the essence of my question. Um, the other aspect of that, which is that we are doing the patrol, that's in another system. Okay, now the the briefing note indicates that we've been using this uh, weather monitoring, weather recording system for about seven years. Is it this or approximately five years? Have, have we been using this weather monitoring recording system for five years or the other system which records our patrols for five years? Which is it that we've been using for five years or have we been using both? Through the chair, I, I'm not positive on the length of time that the ADL has been used. I suspect it's the same amount of time, but we haven't used this one for five years. And is it seven thousand dollars to renew for another five? I've got the seven thousand dollar number in my head someplace. I think that's per year. Yeah, correct. Well, annual cost of just under seven thousand. So we pay that seven every year. Okay, all right. But it does not tie in directly with our road patrol. Um, system. I mean, the ABL does not. No, okay. So, I guess the, the other side of the question is when we do our road patrols, I've always been under the impression that our road patrols, date, time, mileage, road, road network, road, I've always been under the impression that that also is being recorded and uh, archived. Is that correct? That's correct? Okay, so then the only way to tie the two together is, is to go back to, we picked this date, this was January the 19th of 2019. We would have to go back in the other system to January the 19th of 2019 and pull that data out. What time did we do our patrols? What roads did we patrol? And we would have to cross-reference that to this. That's good. Okay, all right. I, I just want to make sure that we've got enough archival information that if we end up in a courtroom, our lawyer has something to work with. This by and of itself shows that we're monitoring, but the other has to show that we're patrolling. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I have to have that clear in my head. Can I start with Council Eagle? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, just a quick question to the CAO. What's your name on the top of the uh, the email? So the email comes uh, to the CAO, correct? Uh, to, 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 to the Chair, to uh, really, uh, at that particular time, I, I, I was the director. <laughs> so it's just, it, it, it was just a historic uh, uh, poll. It would typically uh, go to the uh, to, to the public works manager <laughs> of operations and, and potentially some some staff to uh, rotate through that uh, uh, monitoring uh, on the system. Uh, so the the staff or the the road super would would um, would would get that email, get notification of that email, open the email four times a day, and would have to click it regardless of what time the email comes through. So through the through, through the chair to to the committee uh, during uh, the uh, 
we have the refreshment there wasting a little bit of a while, but I believe since from, from, from October 1st to April 30th, uh, the, 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 the weather must be monitored at least three times in, in that 24 hour time period. So typically it is a, um, a 6 a.m. A noon and, and, and 6 p.m. Typically, is the zoom that monitor is coming in. And if it's forecasting so a, a, a weather event up, upcoming, then most, most likely that midnight report is being reviewed as to, to, to determine whether uh, either uh, road patrol is, is required or if the, uh, uh, if the uh, public works force are mobilized to, uh, to, to go out and address the one uh, events. Okay. Just one, one more. So we created a disconnect from work policy. Does does the person who's doing this three times a day does it does that conflict with the disconnect from work policy in any way? Uh, through the uh, through the chair of the uh, committee, uh, no, I don't foresee that as uh, as being in contravention to the disconnect from work policy. Cool. And then Councillor Hunter. No, I think the. A really good program. We signed on to a number of people <laughs> that go to get, give the, the observation on our roads instead of getting up at six o'clock in the morning and automatically go over and do a road survey and weather report. And then it's been sunny with no wind and no snow all night. There's no need to drive in to go and do a road patrol. You do the road patrol later on during the day. And, and then we're around with money saving and we're good guarantee that we're actually in cases of accidents or anything that you know about where to work and whatever you did when you needed to do it. So excellent programs. And Mr. Parkwood? The deputy mayor has asked all the questions that I had. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Bush. Oh, okay, and ready to follow up. Uh there's a follow up. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. So I just want to get it clear in my head again. So this report was emailed uh, at, it says on here, it was emailed at 12.15. No, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. It says emailed at 12.15. And then the, the email to Mr. Grant uh, is sent at to, to Mr. Grant at 12.16. Now, and that's on Saturday the 19th. What I'm wondering is, it, it says, once you have read the report, please please click on the read button below. So Mr. Grant would click on the read button. Now, what if he didn't see that until the 22nd and he clicked it on the 22nd? Does the system record when he saw it and, and recorded it? And the reason I'm asking that is, it's quite possible that we've got a, a system which gives us the weather at, on the 19th at a certain time. We don't see it, we don't react to it. We don't send our patrol out until the 20th or the 21st. And the weather conditions have changed considerably over that period of time. And now our opposing lawyer has great information to do <laughs> against us. I'm, I'm just wondering how that works. So, uh, so the essence of the question is, does the system record the time at which you punch red? So through the chair to the uh, to, to, to the committee, yes, it would it it, it gives me the timestamp when you hit the the read button. Read. Okay, so if we don't if we don't pay immediate attention to these reports when we get them, we expose ourselves to um, actually, the dereliction of duty because the report came in at 12 19, but we didn't see it until the next day. We're, we're, we exposed ourselves to liability. So, I guess the lesson for me is that it's really these, these reports are really important and they provide a great level of protection to the township if, they're, if the reaction to them is immediate. I guess that's the point that I'm that I'm getting at. So, do we have a, a protocol or some sort of a mechanism to ensure that that we're responding to them on a on a on a timely basis? 
Uh, so through 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 the chair to the uh, to, to to the committee, uh, yes, the 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 ability exists to go in and uh, and, and pull a report that that would indicate the uh, the date and, and, and time and the individual that uh, had uh, um, completed the review of the report. So it's uh, certainly um, and, and and I think there is. Uh, I, I would say if the report comes in at, at twelve fifteen, it's not reviewed till one fifteen. That's not uh, no, no, that's not an issue. But it, uh, most, most certainly, but uh, the staff are, are are well aware that uh, the, the requirement to be monitoring uh, at least uh, three separate times a day. Typically, if there were two or three shifts, then it would just be done uh, dur during the shift. But we're on a, a, a on a single shift, so uh, it works out pretty well to have that sort of 6 a.m. Uh, noon and, and 6 p.m. Uh, a timetable for review, and I think it's 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 it's, it's manageable compared to uh, compared to what used to be a, a paper uh, spreadsheet where you would write in all of the temperatures and what was forecast for the next day and, 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 and sign it that you've read it. This is uh, a much more uh, Efficient and effective system. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, Councillor de Lavoie? No, no, no. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, uh, we're going to move on now. And that brings us to the uh, Public Works uh, road closure for 24 26 Queen Street, Ferguson, in uh, the village of Spencerville. And there is a recommendation with this. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get to the recommendation um, shortly. Um, are there any uh, questions for staff regarding uh, this, this and John's? This and John's. This and John's. This and John's. <laughs> I'll call the question for a mover and second to after discussion. Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, the, the briefing note is pretty clear. I'm prepared to move the recommendation on this one, but I do have a couple of questions to ask. Uh, maybe uh, let, let me get a second there, and then we'll then we'll open up for a question. Uh, Councillor Hunter, thank you for seconding. Uh, okay, concerns now, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Okay, so we're this is recommending that we that we convey the east half of the King Street Road allowance to I think I'm, it's on Mr. Mitchell. Uh, uh, Johnstown story. No, no, this is through, through, through the chair. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a, it's Ferguson uh, 20, 24 26 Queen Street. Right. It's Ferguson 24 26 Queen. Um, okay, so this one is a little bit different because we're really cleaning up what looks to be quite a quite an encumbrance on our uh, on our roads. <laughs> the major encumbrance is on. It appears to be on Second Street. Now we're going to convey all of that land that's on Second, and some of which is on that curve. Now is that curve then Charlotte Street or is it Queen? Uh, <coughs> through the chair to the uh, committee, that would be uh, part of Queen Street. That's still on Queen then. All right. Now, and and so did Ferguson request this conveyance out of sort of out of the blue or? How did this request come forward? I'm kind of curious. Um, through the chair uh, to the committee, uh, I, I had received a call from, uh, from uh, Mr. Uh, well, Todd Ferguson uh, for, for, for his father uh, with respect to uh, the property and uh, working to, to get things cleaned up. So I would say that it um, it's, it's pro it, it probably um, Ended up being a, a, a situation where this was uh, identified um, uh, to them and uh, uh, looking at trying to get that corrected for, uh, for, for, for the future. Okay, now is it all of the properties? We've got a colored sheet here in front of us, Mark, page 59 and 78. Is it, is it all of the properties, Mark, 12, 14, and 16? That's what it kind of looks like to me. 12, 14, and 16 on the colored map. Uh, uh, through, through, um, through, through the chair to ready work. 
we're, we're looking at uh, it, it would be further west uh, or sorry, further north on, on Queen Street. So 20 uh, Queen Street would be a cemetery. And then we have uh, 24 Queen Street that is um, in, in behind <coughs> the, uh, the cemetery. So it would be the, the um, unopened road allowance that uh, is actually being used by 24 Queen Street as, a, as, a, as an entrance way currently. And then uh, the, the, the portion of the property would be right away from the Queen Street. Okay, so the actual building where the property encroaches is the one we're talking about. Yes, if you it, 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 through the uh, through the charity committee, if we look at uh, 26 Queen Street where we have the building and the uh, the building is outside uh, the uh, square part of uh, portion of it, it's it's not exact, but the, there there is certainly uh, the the structure is inside of the uh, of, of the property boundary. So if I can go on, Mr. Go ahead, yeah. sure. So if I look at part two on the other drawing, on that's on page 58 or 78. So have, have part one and part two, have those surveys actually been done? Um, through the chair to, to, to the committee, those, those, uh, those have been done. Uh, and this is just a draft uh, reference plan. And uh, the surveyor uh, is looking to uh, the, the, for the okay to to finalize, but I wanted to bring it to, to committee uh, prior to uh, ensure that uh, committee was sort of on on board with the approach before uh, uh, before having uh, the uh, reference plan uh, finalized. Okay, and the reason I'm asking that question is because I look at part two, and so in part two we're we're giving we're conveying a portion of Second Street. But Second Street has already been uh, stopped up and closed, right? Um, I believe that Second Street right now is just an unopened road allowance. Ah, that's actually being used as a driveway. Okay, so it has not yet been I, stopped it, up and closed. It, 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 it is not. And so we're conveying a portion of it. The rest is just going to be remain as an unopened road allowance, but it will be less than regulation width, if I can put it that way. Um, through 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 the charity committee, what we what we ultimately would be looking at would be uh, conveying uh, part two to twenty six Queen Street and conveying the uh, remainder of that um, uh, road allowance to twenty four uh, Queen Street. That would allow them to have uh, actual frontage on a publicly maintained road. Um, so it would be actually uh, stopped up and closed. And one of the points we made, one of the reasons for that, uh, if we look at page 59, um, 78, really that um, unopened road allowance sort of ends right at the uh, end of uh, 24 Queen Street, so to speak, as it, uh, it, it uh, abuts the Johnstown Creek. So it's, it's would be unlikely that we would be looking to um, open open that up and, and, and invest in that sort of infrastructure uh, at, at a later date. So, Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering why we're doing it in two steps rather than just doing it all at once. So, I think through through through, through the charity committee, we would we, we would be looking at, at at completing it all at once. It's just that they're they're. There's a few um, additional steps that we, we need for 26 uh, Queen Street. I think 24 Queen Street is pretty uh, a pretty simple um, ah, transaction. Okay. And there's two separate owners there. 26 and 24 are two separate owners. Uh, they have, actually they have the same owner. Serious? Yes. So I think that that's part of the part 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 of the uh, full cleanup. Okay. Yes, right. That fits your approach. Yes, that, that, that takes yeah. the encroachments. Uh, oh, sure. All right. I have, yeah, I have a larger question, but deal with it later, Mr. Chairman. That's what you're about? No, I think 26, we're just trying to square that up with that line on, 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 uh, on page 5978. Is that right, uh, Mr. Uh, the chair to see where the 26 is. We just want to make sure that. Is inside the square, is that right? The 26 Queen Street? 
Um, through through the junior committee, yes, yeah. we're, we're 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 looking at making sure that that, yeah. that property is the lot for owners. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Grant. So the recommendation reads that committee recommends the council direct staff to have the draft reference plan finalized and then proceed with a public notice regarding pending closure and conveyance of Second Street between Queen and King Street and seconded by Mayor Sale and uh, Councillor Hunter. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on now to the to the to the, to the next item, and this is the uh, this is the request to convey the remaining portion of King Street in Johnstown. And this also has a, uh, uh, a recommendation. So uh, you've had a chance to read the briefing note. Uh, could I get a mover uh, for the recommendation, please? And uh, Mr. Packwood, thank you. Does he have a seconder? And uh, Deputy Mayor Deschamps seconding. Thank you. Now we'll uh, we'll open it up to uh, questions uh, and or concerns. Now I'm not going to go around the table. If you have a question or concern, please signify by raising your hand. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. So I understand what's happening here. I think, and uh, we're dealing with just the east half of the King Street closure, but it looks like the portion that we're dealing with is only about six meters wide. It isn't even the east half. It's only just a piece of the east half. Is that correct? So the larger portion got conveyed earlier, much earlier. Is that How did that happen? Because generally in those old uh, uh, conveyances, it was the center line went one way and the other, the other half went the other way. And we don't have an explanation for that. And certainly the motion that we have, the historical background that we have doesn't indicate why it would have been uh, such a large portion of that. And we don't have, we, we have nothing behind us. So. Right. To, to, to the chair, uh, <laughs> unfortunately we don't. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use that. Uh, 1964 predates me, so I'm not. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, this does clean up a little bit of an issue, and, and I like cleaning up these kind of things, so no, no question about it. I'll, I'll support this one. Uh, but the larger issue that I'm going to bring up, and I'll bring it up now, we're conveying what is basically a township asset to an individual in all of these conveyances. We've done a number a couple of weeks ago. Are we conveying at no cost or are we conveying at cost of a dollar or are we conveying, conveying at some fixed price per acre or per square meter? What is the, what is the consideration here back to the township in return for the receipt of a township asset, land asset? Is there, a, is there a consideration back to the township? I know that the, the beneficiaries of the conveyance are paying the cost, but they're also receiving a, an asset. Has, has, do we have a, an answer for what the township is receiving in consideration? Uh, through, through, through the chair to uh, uh, committee, uh, at this stage, uh, the uh, these conveyances have just been that the uh, uh, that the individual is paying all costs associated with uh, uh, survey and legal, and that would include um, our legal costs uh, as well. So that there is no um, so so we're not paying any of these expenses uh, at this at this time. There hasn't been an additional um, um, amount um, assigned to that. However, um, I would say that what we've found over the last uh, a year or two, there seems to be an increase um, in a number of requests with respect to 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 stopping up, closing, and conveying. So it may be uh, something that uh, the committee council wants to consider um, in, in that regard. 
Can I go further than follow up? Course. Okay, and and you know I appreciate the fact that these folks are paying are are, are paying costs, uh, but they're also receiving a, a tangible benefit in the form of land, which and especially in this case is going to help. Uh, as he as this as the writer notes in his uh, his email to us, it helped him with his setbacks, and so fair enough. And 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 I like cleaning up these kind of things, so I don't have a real problem, but. When I asked today, uh, who was the owner, who was the new owner of the land on the west side of Frederick Street, uh, north and south of the CNR, and I got the map printed up for me, there's about 12 blocks of land, and our road allowances were not part of that sale. They, they, were, they, were, our, they were our road allowances, they were not part of that sale, but all the rest of that land has been sold off to a third party. And unless we start charging for these conveyances of these unopened road allowances, we leave ourselves fully exposed to the fact that that, that new owner of the land west of Frederick Street can come to us and ask to have those unopened road allowances conveyed. And we've got lots of history that we're doing it at no cost. And we would be giving up probably something like 20 some acres. I think we measured it when we were dealing with a certain other individual. We would be giving it up at no cost. So I think we have to be very careful. We don't get ourselves in a trap here. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna speak more to this when we get to item number 7M. And uh, as of this point in time, I'm prepared to go on with this one. And uh, here you call the question on this one that's in front of the chair. Councilman Hunter, did you want in? Well, I just want to I mean, comment here. Uh, this process started back in the 80s when this was in for Township. And the main reason behind it, we just got our costs out of it together. The council of the day looked at it that, that event. These road allowances where we never have any intention to open. We still own them. We still have a liability because we own that property. We looked at a lot of these road allowances on open road allowance, if we're getting rid of where, yes, whoever we're conveying with, who've got a little bit of property out of it at a cost. Back in those days, the cost was probably more than what the land was worth. <coughs> but, but the township got rid of a liability of a piece of property that we had no intention of ever doing. But if anything major ever happened in that, it was our property. We still could be held liable. So, so the council of the day then looked at it this way. Of, Clearing off property is never any good to us, but we're not going to, not big enough to do anything with only a road. We're never going to open the road, yet we have a liability. So that was the reason behind it. There's never a cost other than you pay the cost to, of getting rid of it. If there's two or three properties along the road, it was generally split between the three or four properties that got it, each paid their share of the, their cost, you know. You know, one in particular that didn't happen. It went in and just paid all the costs, but <laughs> that's besides the point. It, it got rid of the liability for the township. And that was the reason in those days. However, that reason has changed or not. I don't know that it has because liability is a lot more now than it was then. People just swapped it off and yeah. said, well, shouldn't have been going down that road and I got hurt and I shouldn't have been there in the first place. But now that's a different story. So. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, thank you, Councillor. Now, is there anyone else with uh, with with questions and concerns? I do have a mover, and I do have a seconder. Uh, any any other discussion? I'm going to call the question. Okay, uh, the uh, the recommendation reads that committee recommends that council direct staff to publicly advertise the conveyance and prepare a bylaw <coughs> to convey the remaining east portion of King Street and County Road Two to First Street to Johnstown self-storage. Uh, all in favor? Aye. And that's carried, thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to move on now. It brings us to... Hidden call. This is the request to stop up, close and convey part four of plan 15R-6142, 
uh, there is a recommendation that this as well. And uh, it, uh, it reads that the uh, committee uh, recommends that council stop up, close the unopened road allowance known as part four on plan 15R6142 and prepare a bylaw to convey the land to the owner of 7064-44 and that the intended conveyance be publicized through the township website and the newspaper. Could, I'm looking for a mover and a seconder for this. Do I have a mover, please? So moved. I have a mover with uh, Mayor Sayo and the seconder. Uh, Councilor Hunter, thank you. Uh, concerns, questions? Well, Mr. Chairman, if I may. And so in this yeah. case, it's just, we can see very clearly on page 67, uh, the, the small amount of land is being conveyed here. And when we compare that to the map that we had in front of us when we did uh, part two, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's a relatively small amount of land and it's going to, I believe, Pincock uh, at 7064. So, and, and by the way, this is already a reference plan. It's already surveyed. It's just a question, I think, of of registering part four in the name of the new owner. So I have no problem with this one. It's the next one that I'm gonna to get. To. Any other any other questions or concerns? I see none. And I do have a mover and second here. If I could call the question, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Terry, thank you. Now we get to the last one. Yep. <coughs> Yes, and that's on page 75, and this is uh, an open road allowance described as uh, 6142 from the north, part number, part number two, plan 15R 6142 to Ducalo Road. Uh, and you have the briefing note in front of you and the amount of land to be conveyed. So, the recommendation reads that committee recommends that council stop up and close the unopened road allowance from north of part two of plan 15R 6142 to Ducalo Road and provide public notice of the same. Could I have a mover for this recommendation, please? I'm not seeing a mover. Mr. Chairman, I would prefer to see this one discussed before we get to that stage. We can, so we have no mover or seconder, then we'll go to discussion. Uh, questions or concerns? Floor is open, please sit in the middle. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. So I'm back on page, I call it 69 of 78. And thank you very much to the staff for providing the larger, uh, the larger copy of 69 and 78. Now in this case, when I look at page six uh, lots, uh, when I look at what we're being asked to convey, what we're being asked to convey is quite a large amount of land, and it actually passes by several other owners. At least I think it passes by several other owners, but I don't know that. I can see where 70, 76 is, the one that wants to get the land, but but there's at least two other landowners that are going to that are going to be. I'm not going to say disadvantaged because maybe they're not interested. But I think they have a right to know up front, not just by means of a of, of a notice in a paper. They have a right to know what we're intending to do here, uh, because first of all, this portion that we see on page 69. Excuse me. Uh, the red, yellow, the colored copy is 78 to 78. Uh, that red portion that we see, uh, at, at this point, I don't believe it's been stopped up and closed. That's the first thing. And then secondly, there's too many landowners involved here, in my opinion. So I, I would think that we should provide a, a little bit more time and perhaps even initiate the conversations with other those other landowners. 
Uh, Mr. Mayor, would your suggestion be to defer this uh, to to a future meeting? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'd like to hear what staff has uh, to say. Sorry, staff, go ahead. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and uh, to, 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 to the committee. Uh, just to be clear on this, uh, at this stage, there is no intention to convey any of that unopened vote allowance. It is just to stop up and close. And if you recall back in the August uh, meeting, there was some discussion that instead of uh, just going uh, piece by piece, that it would uh, be uh, probably beneficial to stop up and close that entire road allowance. And that, uh, as, as it turns out, um, we, there, there was no final decision on that in, in, in August. And with, the, with, with this particular circumstance, uh, the, the, the request coming in just to stop up and, 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 and close, it sort of aligned with that discussion in August and the feeling was, let, let, let's stop up and close it and we won't convey anything at this time. And, and uh, similar to, uh, as, the, uh, as the mayor noted, there are several property owners that may uh, be, have some interest it's just if we're going if we're going to do it, maybe it, it's best to try to do it all at at once and have that in in, the, in, in that state. So, with that good explanation, Mr. Graham. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Mayor, does that uh, does that put your mind at ease a little more? Well, uh, I'll tell you. So when I look at the recommendation, I have to apologize. When I look at the recommendation in front of me, I see yes, it is it is to just stop up and close. And the word convey is missing from this recommendation. And I guess because it's so many of the others were three steps. That I, and, then, and then, of course, I have this letter in front of me from this owner, uh, which clearly indicates an, uh, uh, an interest in conveyance. So that's where my head was, and I apologize for that. So uh, you know, when, you, when you look at it strictly from the point of stopping up and close, uh, I, I, I am prepared to support stopping up and closing. But not conveyed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hunter. Go ahead. Councilor yeah. Albert, I brought this up, up before we were closing uh, on, the, on the other side of the high, highway there. <laughs> we got a motion to stop up and close the two other little part, parts there. We said at that time it would have been a lot simpler just to close the whole, whole road from one end to the other. There's no opportunity there. And as the property owner indicates, here. He just wants to close it. I talked to him. The reason he wants to close is he does have a wind for buying the property on the other side. But right now, if he does come to an agreement to buy that property on, on the other side, side, it would be because the owner there wants to sever, sell off the back part, which he'd be allowed to do. do. He has two severances up the front. He can't sever another part, but he can sever the back off and, and keep his house on the front. If it's being attached to another property, he can't do that if there's a road allowance in between the property. He, they can't be joined. And that's a problem right now. That's why he'd like the road closed now. And if the road's closed and the deal can be made, then he's willing to come to the township and and, and take that you know, the road that's between their two properties that he could unite the properties. So it's just a, and it's of no value to us. So we're, why not do it all in one shot? We're going to publicize the other two little sections, do it in one shot, do the whole road right through, and then you can convey the two little parts of the thing. They last to convey, but we've already passed it. We're going to convey it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any, any, any other comments or questions? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the recommendation. Uh, it reads that uh, committee recommends that council stop up and close the unaltered road allowance uh, from north of Part 2, Plan 15, R 6142 to Eagle Road and provide public notice of this of the same. Could I get a mover for the recommendation, please? Councilor Hunter, do I have a seconder? Uh, Mr. Packwood, thank you. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. And that's carried. Thank you. And that does it for our action uh, information items. 
uh, which now moves us on to Councilor Inquiries Notices of Motion. Do we have any here tonight? Councilor Hunter? I have one, one inquiry. I guess I should have brought it to the uh, operations manager sooner, but uh, to deal with the uh, breach here and the extent of what we're doing, we get the name of the first trip. Prior to see each street here, here by that something old road, the last one we paid coming down off Center Street, the east end, the very end of our. How come part way down we have a curb and then at the bottom end of that street there's no curb on each side? I thought that was discussed earlier at another meeting. Through the chair, I think. Through the chair or through the CEO, through the chair. Um, that came out of a concern of, from the uh, resident on the corner of Cherry and the county road yeah. they own that large they have a large tree there and if they had gone through with the curbing they would have cut through the root ball of that uh, tree and probably killed it or at least weakened it to the point where it may topple at some point in high winds so it was discussed with the uh, with the township and with the contract administrator and the, the person in the house and uh, they felt that that was, was going to be the, the means to save that tree. It's a very large wood Well, Well, I guess they have reason what they're doing. It. I just don't think it looks like a finished job. But we, you know, there's a tree there already. You can put a contract there to do curves along the, all the street and I'm ready. Of the road there that we're going to end up getting paid with work on. Uh, so. Anyone else with uh, with inquiries? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to move on. Uh, we now come to the mayor's report. Mr. Mayor, if you have one. Well, I just have one thing to say, and, and that is that at uh, the last meeting, we agreed to extend the <laughs> or find the agreement for the river route bus route and so that route is now extended to March the 31st and um, I'm just through the chair to Mr. Grant as our representative on that committee uh, and I know that I brought this up before but I really would like to see another push to get flag down stops uh, incorporated into the system as a means of trying to increase the ridership now I'm not suggesting that that the, uh, the flag down will occur at a place where there's guardrails on either side and and no shoulder in between, but there are certainly between Brockville and Cardinal, or and I think think the bus is now running up through Spencerville and doing a run on County a portion portion of a run on County Road 21. I mean there are portions here where it certainly would be safe. For the bus driver to pull into a driveway or pull off the road at a driveway entrance and accommodate a, a step on rider. And so I, I'm just asking through the chair to, to Mr. Grant uh, and to the committee, really, uh, could we not really take another uh, robust look at, at flag down, uh, flag down availability? Because I think it would have a, a way of increasing ridership. And the other suggestion that I've had and came to me uh, by an individual would it, it's a small system. Would it not be possible to even for people to book rides and book stops? And what I'm getting at is. Even in Ottawa at the, uh, and I, I forget the name of the system. That, that the um, the folks with infirmities use, the bus comes directly to the door. They have to book it ahead of time, but it comes directly to the door. And I'm not suggesting that, but is there some way of providing that driver or the or the system with a computer that would somehow uh, record that I want to be picked up at this location or at this junction? I, I don't know. I'm just looking for ways to increase the ridership because. 
I think we can all see that the ridership is between our last report and this report that we had when we agreed to, ex to sign the contract up till March the 31st, we can all see that the ridership is not increasing. And certainly if it doesn't increase, I don't, I don't see how it's a viable service. So I'm just looking for ways to increase the ridership and make it more convenient for people. So that's my pitch, Mr. Uh, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, our, our liaison with the committee is Mr. Grant, and he's heard your, uh, heard your request. I'm going to move now to Councilor Dillabar. Go ahead. Uh, yes, maybe I can put some, uh, uh, duly chair, some light on to that. Um, <clears throat> you can flag it down. I, I flag it down all the time. I flag it down on number two highway. Mm -hmm. I went up in the school in four or five months. I just, on number two highway, I see the bus come down, I flag it, and he or she pulls over. I jump on where I go. Well, that certainly isn't noticeable to the public. Then it's never been advertised to the public. Well, I think we did have that discussion at the chairman to, to have that. Uh, yeah, we had the discussion and we were told no, that it was not, it, it wasn't a safe thing to do. I'm surprised that the driver, the driver must recognize you as a counselor. Uh, no, because there's two different, two different uh, areas and two different times that I've done that. So nothing to do with being a counselor. It's, 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 a, it's a person who's got probably put a ticket in his pocket that goes from point A to point B. Mr. Grant, can you help me out here? Because I certainly wasn't aware of this yeah. availability. No issue. Um, so yeah. Uh, if, if the chair of the uh, committee, I think the discussion was that we would not have uh, lag down in certain areas, but in the um, um, in areas within that, within Cardinal and, and Johnstown, and some of those safer areas, that we would uh, at least uh, try that on a temporary basis. But it, it's, not, it's never been publicly advertised in any place that I've ever seen. <clears throat> That that availability exists. I, I'm I'm flabbergasted to hear this. I, I really am. Just a question about the, the discussion, of, and I, I believe the mayor mentioned that it's now the service is now going to Highway 21 into into Spencerville. Is that? I don't. Think that. I I haven't heard that. I mean, I just think I saw the bus on that route. <laughs> No, it might not have been the right bus. Was it? No. Oh, okay. All right. So it's, but is it doing Spencerville pickups at all? No. no. Okay. All right. So it's a different bus that I'm seeing. So we're still we're still just Brockville Cardinal, Brockville Cardinal. That is correct. Okay. All right. Well, that's interesting. Mr. Packwood, you want it in? Yes, please. I think having this flag on the business like on two is pretty dangerous. There's a big long stretch of it where nobody passes. When you start getting a bus to stop for people, you know how drivers are today. They just they pass everywhere, and then we're going to start having accidents. And it's liability. And I don't think it's a good idea. I understand trying to get the, uh, the ridership up, and I don't think that's what we do. I just want to get everything. Well, there's lots of places where there's double driveway. <clears throat> anyway, Mr. Town, thank you. Yes. Okay, that was your report. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is uh, no one in the gallery uh, other than uh, our public works manager. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, no, thank you. So uh, we have no one no on Zoom. So the question period is just going to be. And uh, moving on to closed session, we have none. And uh, soon it will be uh, uh, our adjournment. But just before we adjourn, I would just like to take this opportunity to this is probably this is the last uh, public works uh, committee meeting for this term of council. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm sincerely hoping I am back. Uh, in, in in this chair uh, for another four years. However, that remains to be seen. I do want to thank staff. Uh, thank you so much uh, for putting up with my bungling and uh, fooling around sometimes and uh, mistakes and errors.
Uh, senior staff, thank you so much for your reports. Uh, they have been concise and they've been easy to read and uh, they've been extremely well, re well received. And to our, uh, to Mr. Bush and to Mr. Packwood, our, our, uh, our members, our advisory members, thank you again so much. I hope you do uh, reapply uh, for uh, our uh, public works next, uh, next term. Uh, uh, you have been most, most, most helpful. And to my fellow uh, counselors, a big thank you uh, so much. Thank you. Um, that leads us to uh, adjournment. Do, can I have a mover? So move. I have a mover. Do I have a second? And Mr. Packwood, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Virgin. Any name